नमस्कार वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल दी व्यूअर्स एंड लर्नर्स इन दिस लाइव इंटरेक्शन ऑफ सी आई टी एन सी आर टी आई एम रेणु भट्ट विद यू ऑल एंड यू आर वॉचिंग अस लाइव ऑन ई विद्या चैनल चैनल नंबर टेन एंड अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस चैनल यू आर विद अस ऑन आर यूट्यूब चैनल एज वेल दैट इज एन सी ई आर टी पी एम ई विद्या क्लास नंबर टेन एंड डियर लर्नर्स एंड व्यूअर्स इन दिस स्पेसिफिक सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न मोर अबाउट लाइट सो वॉट इज लाइट एंड वॉट आर इट्स रिफ्लेक्शन एंड रिफ्लेक्शन we'll get to know about more about light in this particular session and this session is for science 10th standard students and we have already discussed about its part first if you want to know more about that particular session if you want to know more about light itself you have to explore our youtube channel that is ncert official and ncert pme with their class number 10 so we have joined by our experts to uh, throw more light on this particular topic so without any further delay let's quickly meet him you are mr virgin virgin mr virgin you are pgt physics government boys high secondary school sailguri tamil nadu so very warm welcome and dear learners if you have any uh, query related to this particular topic you can reach out to us through our various medium You can call us on our telephone number that is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine, or you can drop your mail as well. Our email address is dth dot class tenth at the rate cit dot nic dot in, and if you have joined us through our YouTube channel that is ncert uh, pme with your class number ten, then you have to go to the live chat box and then only you can drop your comment out there. Our expert will be more than happy to answer all your queries and doubts if you have any. So we we are waiting for your participation in this particular live interaction with all your uh, queries and questions. And uh, sir, over to you, uh, Bajan sir. And we before we begin this particular uh, session, we would like to know uh, in a brief about last chap session, sir, about part first, sir. Hello. I hope I am audible to you, sir. hello ah good so, afternoon am i audible yes yes audible ma'am yes sir yes audible good afternoon i am bojin in the last session we discuss light reflection and refraction part 1 in that session we discuss regarding reflection of light through mirrors different two types of mirrors are there concave mirror and convex mirror then throughout the session we discuss regarding how the light reflect and ref uh, how light is refracted through the concave and convex mirrors and the application of that uh, ref ref reflection we discuss in that class in this class we are going to discuss regarding refraction of light through lenses so right so as we can see uh, on our uh, presentation on this particular slide i as we can see there is a glass and uh, there is a pencil in it so here i would like to know why do objects appear bent or distorted when viewed through water or glass sir yes ma'am in this session we are going to learn loss of refraction spherical lenses image formation by lenses ray diagrams and use of soft lenses initially i start with the question that they asked how refraction takes place and what is refraction when i when i send a, a ray of light to a particular direction it goes without bending because it is a property of the light that it goes in a straight line this property is called the rectilinear propagation of light but what happens when a glass plate is placed in between the path of the light rays now instead of going like this it will bend like this and again instead of going like this it will bend like this so two bendings are takes place in the in the in its path first bending is take place here here the bending is towards the normal and the second bending is away from the normal when light rays incident from the rarer medium to denser medium here this is air air is a rarer medium and uh, glass is denser medium so when light is enter from a rarer medium to denser medium it bend towards the normal and here when it emerge out the light is going from denser medium to rarer medium so when light going from denser to rarer medium it bends 
away from the normal. Look at this dotted line in, uh, mentioned in yellow. This dotted line is uh, the straight line of the uh, light rays and it is bent away from the normal. So, uh, depending upon the medium, it bent towards or away from the normal. This direction of propagation of light changes when it passes from one transparent medium to another uh, medium is called uh, refraction. So, in order to explain refraction, we need some laws. Hmm. That laws are called uh, laws of refraction. Here, look at this picture. I am sending a light rays to a glass plate. When it enters into the glass plate, it will it gets bent. And uh, I measured this angle. It shows it is 30 degree. Now, I measured the refracted angle. Refracted angle means the angle between the refracted ray and the normal. It, is, it shows the refracted angle is 90 degree. Again, I do the same experiment. Before doing this experiment, I calculate the value of sin 30 degree by sin 19 degree. It shows it is 1.53. Again, I repeat the same experiment with different angle. So now the angle of incident is some 50 degree. For that angle, angle of degree, angle of incidence 50 degree, I got angle of refraction 30 degree. So again I find out the ratio of sine 50 degree to sine 30 degree. I got again the same answer, 1.53. So whatever may be the angle of incident, we will get a angle of refraction in such a way that sine of the angle of the ratio of sine of the angle of incident to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant. I do the same experiment in another medium. That is, I take from air to water. Again, the same experiment when the angle of incident is 30 degree, the angle of refraction is 22 degree. In the previous case, it is 19 degree. Now it is 22 degrees, same angle of incident, but refraction is different. So, the ratio between these two, I will get 1.33. With the different angle I tried, for angle of incident 50 degree, the angle of refraction is 35 degree. So, again I found out the ratio, it is same 1.33. So, by combining all these experiments, they put it in two laws, that two laws are called laws of reflection, refraction. So, laws of reflection we studied uh, last session, this is laws of refraction. The first law says that the incident ray, because here the incident ray is uh, the laser light which is incident on the water surface, the incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal to the incident interference of two transparent media at the point of incident all lie in a same plane. Look at this, if you consider the uh, plane as a screen, then these three are lie on the uh, screen, on the sc plane of the screen. So, we can say that the incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal to the uh, interference of two transparent media at the point of incident all lie in a same pl plane. This is the first law of uh, refraction. Now, the second law of refraction is the ratio of sine of the angle of incident to the sine of the angle of refraction remains constant until the medium is same. Because while I am doing the experiment, the ratio of sine 30 by sine 22 is same 1.3, I got it. For different angle, the same 1.33 is got for water as the second medium. So, the ratio of the sine of the angle of incident to the sine of the angle of refraction is a constant value. This is the second law. This law is otherwise called Snell's law. So, using these two laws, we can explain the term uh, refraction very well. We can discuss uh, one by one in this session. Hmm. Now, how this uh, change in path takes place. That is how the normally the light 
travels in a straight line path. So how this change of path takes place? That we can uh, look at here. Now, when a light is incident on the any medium, the speed of the light gets changes. When it moves through air, it it uh, the, its speed is a constant. It it will come with a, with a particular speed. But when it is incident on a glass or water in another medium, it bends because the velocity gets changed. If the, if it comes with the same velocity, it will come in the same direction of the incident ray. Now, since the velocity gets changes, its direction also changes. How it changes means it depends upon the velocity of the uh, two medium. So, if we, if I take V1 is the velocity of the or speed of the light in the medium 1 and V2 is the speed of the light in the medium 2, the ratio between V1 and V2 is a constant. We can call that as a refractive index. The same Snell's law is uh, here referred in another format, the refractive index. Here I said N21 because this is the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium. Here first medium is air, second medium is glass. So with respect to air, the refractive index of the glass is N21 equal to V1 by V2. Uh, while it, if you continue this, it will take another refraction in the uh, second phase. So here it comes from air to, here it comes from glass to air. So now it is represented by N12, that is speed of the medium in second medium divided by speed of light in medium 1. So this ratio is a constant, therefore uh, N12 is equal to V2 by V1. N12 is the refractive index of the first medium with respect to the second medium. So this is the difference between the when, when light is refracted in from denser medium or rarer medium. In the first case, the light is refracted from the, uh, the medium is from air medium to gla uh, glass medium. Second phase, it is glass medium to air medium. So whenever uh, the refractive index be calculated, we have to consider from which medium to which medium it will come. That is the uh, important point we have to note it. So the bending of light is refraction. The bending of light is because of the change in speed of light when it moves from one medium to another medium. So this is the basic uh, thing we, you have to know regarding refraction. So if you observe another thing, if it is straight line, it goes like this. I, I marked as a dotted line uh, as a white in white color. So this is the emergent light. There is a gap in between these two light. This gap is called lateral displacement of the light. So what is lateral displacement? When a light is incident on a glass plate, it goes parallel to the incident rays because whatever happened in the first phase is reversed in the second phase because first phase it comes from air to glass medium so it will bend in a particular angle. So the same bending will take place in the reverse order in the second uh, phase. So both are incident ray and emergent ray are in same direction, but there is a small displacement between these two. This displacement is called a lateral displacement. Okay. So, so here um, we would like to know uh, how you differentiate between mass density and optical density, sir. Yes. Now, when a ray of light is incident on the on any medium, it gets deviated. It is because of the uh, because it is because of the velocity. I said already. But velocity, how it changes, it depends upon the density. When we are talking about density, there are two types of density. One is mass density, and another one is optical density. Mass density means how the atoms are tightly packed. You may please continue, sir. Uh, mass density means how the atoms are tightly packed when 
in, in that particular material. For example, uh, here, the, the, here the light rays is passed from air to water medium. Here the density of water is approximately 1 gram per centimeter cube, that is mass density. Optical density is 1.3, that is it is a refractive index of the water. This optical density is how light interact with the electron around the atom because bo both are different. How it is closely packed means it is mass density. How the light interact with the electron cloud present in that atom that is optical density. Uh, some students may think that when mass density is greater, optical density will be also greater, but it is not always correct. Look at in case of kerosene, uh, in kerosene the mass density is 0 0.80. So, it is less than the density of water. If you put kerosene in water, uh, it will, <coughs> kerosene is above the water. So, the density of water is less than, the density of kerosene is less than the density of water. But the optical density is 1.44 for kerosene. So, it, it will get, get more deviated in case of kerosene. So, do not confuse with this mass density and the optical density. Both are different. We cannot compare, uh, we cannot compare mass density with the uh, velocity of light in case of light. It is completely depends on the optical density. So, uh, different uh, optical density are mentioned in your text textbook. You can go through the textbook and uh, uh, see how this optical density is changes for different materials. Fine, sir. So, next session we can discuss about lenses. Spherical lenses. Hmm. Why it is called a spherical lenses mean? Spherical surface whose refracting surface of bulging outward is called a convex lens. There are two types of lenses, convex lens and concave lens. If the, the refracting surface are bulging out, it is called a convex lens. Why it is called a spherical lens means, if you complete this lens with some spherical surface, the inter, intersection of these two spheres will form this lens. So, it is called the spherical lens. Similarly, in case of concave lens also, a concave lens is made up of two concave surfaces which are also a part of two spheres. How the two spheres will be formed? Here, the, here is one sphere and here is one sphere. So, out of these, these spherical surfaces that is refracting surfaces are constructed with the help of spheres. So, these lenses are called spherical lenses. Uh, by combining these concave and convex, we can create many type of lenses. But in this session, we are going to deal with only the concave and convex lens. Sir, here let me tell you that we have only 5 more minutes left for this session, sir. Okay. Some, uh, we can now discuss some of the terms used in spherical lens. Sure, so, sir. C1, C1 is the center of, these spheres are called center of curvature of the lens. So, if you take a convex lens, it has two center of curvature, one left side, one right side. It may be same or may not be same uh, <coughs> because it depends upon the, uh, the spherical uh, surface that connected in the two refra refracting surface. Similarly, uh, concave uh, surface also have two uh, center of curvature and the line imaginary straight line passing through these two center of curvature of the lens is called the principal axis and uh, the central point of the lens here this is the central point of the uh, lens it is called the optical center and the effective diameter of the circular outline of the spherical lens is called the aperture here AB is the aperture uh, normally the aperture is mu much less than its radius of curvature so radius of curvature means this O from O to C2 is called uh, the radius of curvature. If the aperture, up, aperture is very small when compared with the radius of curvature, it is called uh, thin lens. 
normally the uh, lenses which are used in our labs are called thin lens. In that thin lens, ap aperture must be uh, much less than its radius of curvature. Okay. Now, uh, if you uh, study the rules of the, if you want to learn about ray opti op optics, we need to know about the basic rules uh, for ray diagrams. There are four basic rules. First rule is when a ray is parallel and incident on the, uh, when a ray is parallel to principal axis is incident on a convex lens, it will merge at a point, we can call that as point as a focus. So, while you are drawing a ray diagram, if a ray of light is coming parallel to the principal axis, it should pass through the principal focus. That rule you must know. For, similarly, for concave lens, uh, a parallel ray is incident on the concave lens, it will appear to pass because it gets diverged here. After uh, refraction, it gets diverged. But if you extend the ray, the ray of light backward, it will meet at the point F. So, we may say that it appears to pass through the principal uh, focus. So, this is the rule number one. Rule number two, when a ray of light is passing through the principal focus, after refraction from convex lens, it will emerge parallel to the principal axis. So, uh, the reverse of the first one, if it passes through the focus, it will get parallel to the principal axis. In the case of convex, in the case of concave lens also, when it, uh, it is passed through the, appears to pass through the focus, it will be parallel like this. Now, rule number three, a ray of light passing through the optical center uh, of a lens will emerge without any deviation. So, without any deviation, it will go. So, these are the three rules you must know uh, wherever you need to draw a ray diagram. Because if you uh, if you want to apply uh, any, any diagram, you have to know these two. Now, let us, in the, in the case of concave uh, lens also, the same rule applied. So, images formed by the convex lens, let us go So, in through. a brief, we would like to know as we are running very short of time right now, sir. Only, only how much time is there? No. Sir, uh, only a minute, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So, please now, sum up in a minute, sir. Example point of view, okay, ma'am. Sum up. Yes, sir. Okay. So, this session is very, very short. Um, we, we learned about that uh, the spherical lenses, that is concave and uh, convex lenses and some rules that can be, uh, that can be used to, to construct ray diagrams in the, in the, in, if you want to draw any ray diagram, these rules may, you, it may be helped. And also we discuss about mass density and uh, optical density and how this refraction takes place. Uh, with the help of this idea, you just to go through your textbook and uh, draw the diagram. Uh, I, I will explain only one diagram, with, with that I will finish. So here there is a parallel rays, then when, when it comes parallel, it will focus on the F2. This is the rule number one. From this, you can, uh, when an object is at infinity, it will focus at the F2. This is the one of, in, the, in case, so therefore, you, you will get the image at the position F2. See, uh, the size of the image is diminished and the uh, nature of the image is real and the inverted. Real image means we can capture with the screen. Here right. also, it is captured with the screen. So, in this fashion, uh, if the object is placed in any position, you can uh, use, with the help of ray diagram, you can measure, you can uh, get where, you, you can observe where you will get the image and you, you can discuss about the position, size and right, the nature of the image. Right, sir. So, uh, thank you so very much, Virgin sir, for being with us and for this uh, valuable information about light and refraction and uh, reflection part second. Thank you so very much, sir. Thank you.
thank you ma'am. So dear learners and viewers, in this particular session you came to know more about light's refraction and you came to know about mass density and optical density as well along with ray diagrams and their rules. We will definitely uh, come back with another uh, session with this and here let me tell you that we have another session lined up for you for mathematics 9th standard students. The topic would be circles uh, for this particular session as we have to wrap up this session me renu bhat is taking your leave but you stay tuned to evidya channel thank you so very much namaskar okay. thank you thank you